Yo, yo, it's ODB. This is OLP's Mini Truck and Flip Through for issue 101, May 2000. I want to do this quick little intro before we get into the actual magazine. Again, issue 101, May 2000. Rest in peace, Rob Scepter. Right after Rob had passed over 10 years ago, we had these, uh, a local friend of mine put these together for me and um, uh, for a couple of the members that knew Rob. But Rob was born. August of 69, and he passed, unfortunately, in July of 2011. Uh, Rob was a member of Severed Ties and has went down in mini truck in history. Rob was also a really great guy, but his um, truck, you'll see in a moment, November 98, his pup, his Isuzu pup, was shot for mini truck and magazine. It ran May 99. The truck was a tad too dark or however the story went in terms of colors for the cover so Rob hatched a plan with Matt Torgerson, and uh, they were going to rebuild the truck. So Matt had built it the first time. They said, hey, let's do it again. Rob's truck ran on the cover 12 issues later. Uh, it was shot again November 99. So it ran in May 99 as a feature, and then May 2000 on the cover. Rob's truck was the first severed ties truck on the cover. Uh, R.I.P. Rest in peace, Rob Scepter. Of course, you can check the hashtags via social media, R.I.P. Rob Scepter or Severed Scepter for more. I just want to go over these couple slides and then we'll get right into the issue. I knew Rob. My dad became pretty good friends with Rob. He would talk to him all the time. And you can see Rob here in show coverage, uh, given the piece. That was a great photo that was taken of him cruising around in the Isuzu. He loved this truck. Uh, here you could see May 99, again, it was shot, um, you know, seven months or so prior, November 98. It runs, um, he, at the time, he was in lifestyle minis. And uh, this truck was very cool. You could see the interior was totally done. We went through that flip through. And I did say that when we got to May 2000, you're going to see it again. And uh, here we go. It was shot November 99. And this was... Possibly the first photo shoot I was at. It was a cover shoot. Of course, Lance shot it, and you guys will see here in a few moments. But I wanted you to see the side by side comparison. the The two things that really, or three things that stick out. Uh, you know, you see the 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 uh, billet steering wheel. You can see the uh, motorcycle mirrors are the same, and you can see that front turn signal uh, shaved. So uh, the the uh, truck looked awesome. Here's a photo of Rob and my dad. Rest in peace to both, including my pops, a.k.a. Papa Smurf and Rob. This was November 2003. So um, got 20 years ago this year. And uh, they always had a good time hanging out. Rest in peace, Rob. Let's jump in uh, to this flip through. And shout out to Matt Torgerson for building such an iconic truck. And I'll tell you guys the fate of where Rob's truck might be now when we get into this one. All right, so we'll transition into the typical flip through. Thanks for watching that quick intro. Rest in peace, Rob Scepter. Again, what a legacy this truck has. Some realize it, of course, some don't. The ironic thing was we were at the Aftermath Dragon the Alley Bowling Tournament. God, I think it was last weekend from the point that I'm recording this. And Jamil told me that Rob's truck, which basically was between two owners um, in Tampa for a very long time, they have since sold it. So it was a guy um, that had it, and then it ended up with his, I think, sister-in-law. And she recently sold it, and I believe it's going to go to the West Coast, but we'll have to find out. But uh, a couple of tidbits here. Uh, Lance, of course, shoots it. I was... There that day, I remember it being shot. I, I know exactly where this tree was. I don't think this tree is still there. I uh, tried to line up this magazine to this feature a few years ago. And um, maybe I'll try to throw one of those photos in here. But it's hard to do now because I, I, don't, I don't think this same tree is still there um, here, of course, at the, at the fairgrounds. This was... The first, as I said earlier, the first severed ties truck on the cover, which is kind of crazy to think about because from 88 to 2000, basically there wasn't a, a severed truck on the cover. And that's going to be, we'll talk about that, of course, more as we get through all of these issues. It was the third cover 
to have billet specialties wheels. The first one was, of course, Lomigo. And then Chris Wadier, I think it's Wadier's, um, brand new 95 Nissan hardbody king cab painted by Cal Concepts. Uh, those, those were, well, uh, yeah, those were the two. Uh, which was the uh, truck that is now in Assorted Miniatures, I think it is. But with all that being said, um, again, awesome cover. Rest in peace, Rob. And uh, let's jump in. So here we've got a ton of features in this issue. Uh, you can see there the shows, which you couldn't really see on the front due to the label. you got Show and Shine Championship Finals, Summer Slam, Alter Images Ohio, Indie Truck Bash. And then don't forget down here, shout out to Craig Braden team. It's sitting pretty. Uh, I met a lot of these guys when I went to Relax It in the Northwest a couple years ago. And they are going to actually have a show this year. So we'll be hitting on that um, here real soon to talk about their event. But uh, it's going to be on Instagram in terms of the content or in terms of the, the info. But uh, it's a Pacific Northwest show. So if you're up that way, uh, get ready. And then I do, let me flip back here. You could see Florida gets this month's bragging rights. Rob Scepter, a proud member of Severed Florida, one of the original Severed Florida guys. Uh, I've talked to Matt Torgerson. Matt Torgerson built the truck both times. Matt's still my friend. Uh, we've been friends a long time, rather. And hopefully I'll get to see Matt in April. Uh, we do want to have Matt on as a guest. Uh, I think it'll be cool. He worked on a ton of trucks, including this one, and uh, really you know, has done a lot for mini trucking. Mods, mods, mods. So the editorial here, again, you can see color, a little bit of different spin. Again, with a new editor, things are starting to become, you know, more uh, more color, which is cool. But again, not 100% in color yet. Some of the font and little things, you know, you'll see little stuff change. Um, here is Ch Ch Cheetah and this uh, 92 Ford Ranger. Or no, he had already built the 92 Ford Ranger, and this was Darren Hill's uh, truck from Woodstock, Illinois. So there you go. You got uh, your color Godfather ads. I think I saw, I think it was this truck I saw years ago at Indy Truck Bash, or it was one like that, like a courier. And then you see... That, that was always a cool shot with the Phantom Grill, hood open, doors open. Uh, if you guys like what we're doing here, uh, search OLP via any podcast app. Dope truck. Check us out. Uh, we're going to continue to ramp up the content here. Um, you guys have seen it, and we appreciate it. All the support. So... This truck here was Graham Fuller's 84 Mazda B2000. Uh, I can't rattle off, like, there was, like, B1800 and things like that even before. I guess that, was that technically a 2000, though? A B2000? Uh, it could be just a typo. But uh, that always throws me off because I'm like, wait a minute, the B2000s I thought were uh, a little bit uh, older. Here is a truck that has on the tag, why you'll be drooling. I think is how you say it. Why are you drooling? Yeah, there you go. Took, took my brain a second. Uh, swingers, backward, and badass. So it kind of ties into Lance's editorial where they're talking about body mods, right? So like this would have been this in, in addition to street sources, how information was kind of exchanged in that era, you know, primarily the magazine. Here's sitting pretty 9-9. Nine, 9-9, nine. Nine, nine, guess who's back? Like Dre would say, look, go-ped. Go-peds were all the rage. Still rocking the go-ped I have. I got from my buddy Marlon. Billy Bob's Mazda. It's kind of cool. When Billy Bob was here last time, he got to hang out at the crib. and It's kind of cool. From All the way from the Pacific Northwest. Had a good time. The Scarlet Edge. And you could see Mike or Matt Emery and Mike Self took this one. This feature, uh, the photos, and then Brent Benfield. So, pretty cool, badass truck. I always love these trucks in red. 
They look good. And you could see from the Forever Faithful up there, that kind of gave a little insight to that. It was a Forever Low Truck. These guys always went hard in the paint. Always had some badass stuff. And I've always been a fan of that wheel. It's pretty cool to see, um, you know, all those wheels, all older wheels come back. Those are the Cortez, of course. That's an 18 inch. Shout out to Colorado Custom. They're in Anaheim for those scoring at home. Um, so, yeah. Uh, ironically enough, this Ranger was on the cover of May 99. And that was the issue that Rob's truck was in. So, uh, those are Colorado Custom Wheels as well. But uh, you can see there, that's when they were really starting to push the early days of websites and stuff. But, uh, yeah, that was the truck that was on the cover that had been at SEMA and shot out there when um, when Rob's truck ran as a feature. So Show and Shine Championship Finals 9-9. You can see that car right there. I think that was in the last issue we went through. So it kind of lines up. Check out the Mitsubishi Mighty Max. Super clean. Mini Truck and Magazine. That green though. Again, leave a comment. It definitely helps us out. Many of you continue to leave comments. That helps us. And uh, we've continued to see subscriber growth. Um, if you're trying to boost your channel, I would tell you what people have told me and what I've learned from watching other videos is you got to put the content out there. Uh, the more content you kind of get out, the easier it's going to be to help your channel grow. So uh, separated from reality, that tied into the club name, separate uh, separate reality. Uh, these guys are still around doing the damn thing. And uh, this guy's name, if I remember correctly, was Charles. And uh, this thing was, you can see here, it was shot at the Tampa uh, Fairgrounds by Mini Truck and Staff. So it could have been Courtney, one of the guys that had the chime in. Chime in. I mean, it could have been Lance as well, and he just put that. But um, very cool truck um i think it even ended up getting more work done to it but um may have but it had some crazy body mods where basically this fender if i remember correctly it was molded into the truck so you can see there where you can't unbolt it um these guys again hardcore mini truckers been these guys were around a long time and i think it was always we'd see it at a lot of shows it was in a club a separate reality which I think, I think those guys are still, I'm pretty sure I saw the shirts. So here you go, Severed Scepter, which was a great great name. Bad Habits Continue. And again, shout out to Matt Torgerson. Matt built this truck. He was good friends. Probably the, the person I knew that was closest to Rob. Um, there were other guys in Orlando that were friends with him. And um, I may have alluded there at the beginning, but... Uh, you know, this Rob really wanted it on the cover. And I think when the first round, I mean, the truck was awesome. You guys saw that side by side comparison, but it, uh, it was a little bit too dark. And sometimes, you know, the politics and, and things like that, and maybe it just doesn't look as good on the cover. You know, that's been a long standing thing, but Rob was dedicated, you know, with Matt to go back and Rob kind of, uh, you know, was a guy that, you know, early in the days of, of I'm not going to say it was maybe the first truck, but it was one probably the handful of trucks ran the motorcycle mirrors kind of had that lineage in terms of the biker side not saying that rob was necessarily a biker maybe he was maybe he just hung out with those guys but of course he knew what he liked the engine bay was always cool too because what they did is on that on these isuzus you have that like that almost like that pinch that kind of goes all the way around and a lot of guys would just paint from that down black and that's what he kind of did of course he had some chrome pieces in there uh tom from building acrylic fantasies uh, a longtime Floridian, you know, he had made some of those pieces as well. The interior was a standout on it. Kind of that oatmeal color, I guess you'd say. And uh, we'll talk to hopefully Matt Torgerson. Shout out to Matt again. I know he watches these. I appreciate it, Matt. You know, Matt's got some stories. You know, there's there was a color in between the color that you saw at the top and this color. There's a story behind that uh, that I think you guys would maybe appreciate. Um you can see here, the truck does not look bad at all. I, I like exactly how it looks, but I'll show you one tidbit. 
because we knew this truck. Um, if you look here, this thing's laid out pretty much flat. You're not going to be able to get anything under that. But in this era, uh, certainly there were uh, a little bit of photoshops, and you'll see that as we go. I probably won't be able to point out every single one of them, but if you look there at um, the pinch weld, they kind of just drew that little line there just to give it a little bit more symmetry in terms of the cover. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. Again, you'll see a lot of that going on as we go with like logos. And I think the other thing, speaking of logos, it just reminded me, if you look at this front windshield, uh, you will see there is, uh, they photoshopped out the severed logo. And that wasn't really, you know, that wasn't like saying, hey, you can't have the club stuff on there. Um, because if you look there, you, you don't see the mini truck and logo either at the bottom middle. Uh, there's a built specialties over there on the far right. You can barely make out that little sticker that Rob had on there. But you'll see a lot of that, um, you know, kind of from here out. I mean, again, they probably did some of it even before that we didn't talk about. But those are those little tidbits I like to point out. Um, just things that maybe you've never noticed. Uh, we knew Rob. Uh, my dad became friends with him. You saw the photo at the top there. Uh, just was a really just a fun loving dude and um, you know rest in peace to him uh, again his name goes down in mini truck in history uh, because of you know this badass truck man he was a cool dude again rest in peace Rob and you can see here the Phantom Grill there is a guy locally Chris I think that has the Phantom Grill that he ended up acquiring from the other guy that had it, you could see the severed logo. That was always a cool logo. The suicide doors and super clean interior. A nice solid write up too. I mean, you didn't always see that from, you know, you got your little bit of kind of intro there, but then boom, you know, two full pages with more content written up than photos, I guess, if you look at these two. And that's a testament to like all of the mods done to this truck and how much, you know, the story behind it. So I'd encourage you to check that one out uh, or pause it and zoom in and whatnot if you need to. Uh, Matt Torgerson built a lot of cool trucks, and that was just one of them. So uh, big shout out. So Summer Slam Michigan 99. Uh, the gentleman that owns this truck chimed in, and he's, he still owns it. Uh, pretty cool to always see that. You know, some guys were able to kind of put their stuff away in the garage all these years and as I've said on the podcast, talking to different guests, including Fred Hebron, that we've recently had on Hebron, um, he uh, you know he was able to keep his truck all those years. Uh, there's the truck we saw earlier, I think maybe. I think so, maybe, but it was a black and white photo. Um, but I say that because uh, you know, in the long run, it probably does save money. I mean, if you had a truck back in the day that was bodied and interior and stuff like that. And you were able to sit on it for 20 years and now you're kind of back into it. And you know, you don't have the skill. If you're like me, you don't really, you can't build your own stuff, so to speak. Uh, you definitely save money because stuff's obviously more expensive now. So this was Andrew post. And this truck I sometimes will get mixed up, and you guys can maybe chime in if this was the one. I think this is it. This is the truck that was on the, because I believe the guy's from Mississippi. He was an RA. And this is the truck that was on the group photo for one of the, the covers with the uh, Texas Heat Wave. Okay. So am I thinking of the right one? Maybe, maybe not. I remember seeing this one in person. Uh, these guys up in this area, I talked to Eli about this. Uh, th back in that era, they were getting plexiglass steering wheels made. These things were freaking awesome. And um, Alan was one of the guys, and uh, Eli, you know, those guys would always have it. All these these guys kind of ran together, um, if I remember correctly. But, you know, the guy's name was, I think, Andrew Post. Yeah, right here. And uh, awesome truck, even by today's standards. Always loved it. Clean engine bays. Again, you can kind of see on this one, same as what I was talking about with Rob, how everything would be black, kind of that point down. A little bit of chrome on top. Those air cleaners always look great chromed. And uh, this might have been the one that got graphics, and it might have been the one that was on the Texas Heat Wave cover. 
Um, but you guys could chime in. I, I want to say that it is. I do remember it was gray and um, whatnot. Here you have Altered Images Ohio SummerSlam. So uh, some show coverage going down. There's the Wilt Built. Nissan Hard Body. And then, of course, the famous Mazda. I think it's still around. Talk about still around. Bab, still doing the damn thing. Steel Surgery. So, again, showing, kind of keeping that theme, the body mods. That was Street Boutique. And this could have easily been, and it probably was, off the top of my head, I was getting ready to say a minute ago, that could have been Tim Parker's right there. Maybe it was an older... No, that's a Mazda. I'm thinking Izuzu. But Street Boutique, that's where my mind went. Nothing scripted here. This is all... Off the off the off the dome, <laughs> uh, sixth annual indie truck bash. Uh, what a, an amazing show! Lance, or excuse me, Courtney would go on to write about uh, ITB and why the name changed from indie truck bash. Maybe I'll go over that at some point and maybe talk to some of the guys up there about that history. Uh, he talked about that, of course, after he went to mini or to God. My brain is spun around. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I. He wrote about that once he went to Street Trucks Magazine. We recently saw this. Well built. Same as that. Um, Lenny, Lenny's truck. And of course, there's the Mazda again. But yeah, the truck was, or this show was known. Uh, it was put on by Latest Craze and Special Events. Uh, and it was Indie Truck Bash. And it did change. There was a reason behind the name change to ITB. Uh, some of you guys might know. Remember seeing this truck at Nopi 99 or 2000? I think it was super clean. I think it got featured too, but uh, really, really clean Tacoma. Here you've got the, the ground, ground bound S10 that uh, got redone by Don that ended up on the cover of Street Trucks. That truck won uh, Best Mini Truck at uh, Showfest 2010 when I debuted my chassis. Don's a VW guy, and uh, I know him and Chico kind of rebuilt that truck. That thing was so awesome. It was awesome the first time, but re you know seeing it redone kind of brought up to, to current standards was pretty cool too. Although it could have easily stayed. Uh, I mean, dude, it has a chrome axle. That's how nice that truck is, and that's what Mike needs to do. I told Mike, I saw him this weekend, I said, Mike, you need to be thinking about chrome in your axles and your hubs and all that stuff. Um, if you listen to the podcast, that'll make sense. You can see here the same tree. So they did uh, multiple features. I remember standing there while features were being done and guys were cruising by, slinging up rocks and, um, and whatnot. I did mention even recently, this was a photo that we saw, and I kind of said I remember you know, guys that would do this, uh, and I said Mitsubishi because you could see the logos there. That's the, the photo that we saw in one of those uh, last couple of issues. Um, but yeah. Kind of cool, something a little bit different. And uh, for you guys that watch these all the way through, definitely appreciate it. Uh, it helps us. We are literally, I know I keep saying this, but the the uh, the monetization, it looks back at the last 365 days. So there'll be a day that we're almost to 4,000, then it will drop a couple hours watched. It's just crazy that um, it's, it. I tell people it's not easy to get to the monetization number, but, uh, you know, we're still plugging away. So you got top five rules for environmentally conscious mini truckers. The, again, this is still the era of renting VHS. What's in the CD changer? Born Again, Notorious B.I.G. Speaking of Notorious B.I.G., um, March 97 is when he was he was killed, about six months after Tupac. Gets to about February time, and I start thinking about that. Lionel Torres. This was uh, a car from the West Coast. Super clean. And these cars, as I've said before, they really didn't have too much of an outlet for being featured. And I can see right here on the back logo, looks like it is Far Side. Their little logo. We've seen plenty of trucks get featured, even a recent one. But uh, this was cool. Again, I think Lance, um, 
he had forged a, a kind of a relationship with Rob. Um, if I remember correctly, Matt's told me, you know, Rob called there one time and they were, they were chatting and, you know, they shot the truck and it ran as the feature and for it to run again, you know, 12 months later on the cover, just really unheard of. I mean, I'd really have to slice and dice, but I mean, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that, that ran a mini truck and as a feature. And then literally 12 issues later, same month, plus a year, May 99 to May 2000 on the cover, just insane. Here you see the Sphinx truck that, of course, did run in trucking because trucking still continue to run mini trucks. Love that truck. Uh, there's uh, there's a cool story behind it. We had to get Charles on maybe one time to talk about it. Maybe maybe he did when he was on, but it talked about um, how they edited the paint. Some of you guys know how they edited the paint for car shows. I'll just leave that little cliffhanger. Bow down. And then you have MIC, Bobby Billiard. You got the famous MIC worldwide kind of logo. Thanks for watching at the beginning there. Again, the little nod that we have to Rob Scepter. Great dude. Matt Torgerson built a very cool truck. Again, this is only one of many that he built. Uh, but to be on the cover, you know, for me to be in this chapter, Severed, Florida, for Rob to have the first truck on the cover, of mini trucking from Severed Ties Club. It's a huge honor. You can go to severedties.com and go to Memorial. There's a little bit more information there. Some I showed earlier, kind of the dates, you know, the date he was born and the date he passed back in 2011. But rest in peace, Rob. Keep on mini trucking, everyone. Let's keep this uh, thing alive and uh, stay on the rise. Thanks for all the support. I'm going to flash up here now to subscribe if you can or let it click through so you can watch the next video. We are Peace.